thing is though that on the way down the road to get to here is I started indicating left and the car that was behind me passed me so I stopped indicating briefly and then I started indicating again because I was about to make this turn and the next car passed me I'm like what's going on just crazy so but then we successfully made the turn without more cars passing so go figure you can tell us in the comments why you think they were passing I didn't want to slow down I didn't want to stop I uh, don't know kind of rude it was, it was rude and dangerous and for two of them to do it and dangerous dangerous yeah because we what were if turning I made left that turn while they were passing yeah anyway I think they were just um, on Mexican mindset yeah but they were American plated cars yeah so all I gotta think can think is that they assumed they were still thinking in yeah in that Mexican way of uh, or Baja way of if you indicate left while you're going down the road it means pass <laughs> but that's not what it means everywhere else in the world so oh dear I, I know, know. I, give, I give them zero of the ten <laughs> let us know who you think that is yeah, but you don't know. If you know who that who I'm representing, then put put it in the comments. Imitating. Imitating, yeah. <laughs>
Come here, you crazy webbit. Oh, you're chasing webbits now. Yeah, I want to invite them to dinner. I bet Tony. you do. Wait, I smell crazy webbit feet. Tiny middle? Middle of what, human? Middle. Oh. What the heck? He just pops between my legs. Jeepers creepers. Just like that. Don't do that again. Sounds a fairly dense bush. It's leaving its little cells on the ground there. As you can see. So yeah, give them wide berth. Wait, who's giving birth? Um, tend to keep Tony on the leash through these types of things because he'll just barrel right through them. Yeah, it's a gift. It's the teddy bear ones that you have to be super cautious about because they kind of, they look nice and cuddly, but their little balls do jump out at you, or they seem to anyway. I'll give you a demonstration of uh, what it's like. I'm just gonna touch it with my shoe lightly. See, and they kind of want to stick to you. Whoa, See. do that again. So imagine that on your skin. That's crazy. Um, clothing. And I have rubber soles and they still attach just like that. And trying to get them off, as you can see, once they're on, they just don't want to come off. In fact, they, you try to get them off, they stick even more. Anyway, I'm just gonna detach this very carefully. A closer look of what it looks like. It's like little parts of the cactus that throw themselves around to pollinate and create havoc in the world. I managed to get it off and as you can see it leaves its spines. They really embed themselves. You have to manually pull it off. You just have to be really careful that you don't get it on your fingers. Careful! Um, Usually tweezers or a comb would be the best tool for it. Anyway, I'm going to leave them on and hopefully they'll kind of work themselves loose as we walk. This squirrel is kind of cute. It's almost like it's peeking around the corner. Check out who's coming along on the trail. It's all curved, even the other arms. Looks like the Oh, it's broken off. It's the top part. Interesting. Here we are. Home sweet home. As you can see, this is a pretty large spot. Probably three different places to perk. Did someone you say can pork? orientate yourself any which way. We've done it this way with the back facing southwest a little just to have the afternoon sun on our back so the motorhome doesn't get too hot. Is she talking if to herself again? If you don't have a motorhome, yeah. you might not know that the large windshield might be the best thing for a view, but it is also a heat issue if the sun is pounding down the top towards the front. So we try to keep the windshield on the north side, preferably during warmer days. So, morning sun is okay. The sun is rising on our passenger side, moving around the back and setting on our driver's side. You might notice that our hoods are up. This whole area, southern Arizona, I guess, does have an active rodent population and this particular area here it's pack rats the issue is worse in some years than others it depends on how much rain they've had in the summer and how much their homes have been washed out anyway uh, so basically we have the hoods up to allow light in which helps deter rodents it's not a foolproof preventive but it, it does help we do have little lights in them too that come on with motion at night. So we pop the car hood up, motorhome hood as well, even though there are big gaps in it anyway, but it's uh, the more light, the better. Some people do it and some people don't. As you walk around and look at the other RVs, you'll see some with hoods up and 
some art. We have this little device, it's battery operated. Uh, we run it on rechargeables. It lasts about 45 days maybe before we need to change it over. It's a little rodent propeller device. It flashes lights at random intervals. Um, different colors, strobe lights. Whether it works or not, you know, there are varying opinions about it. Definitely two extreme camps where some will say it absolutely does not work and some will say it does work. We're kind of in the middle. We just put in things as we see fit. Every little bit helps. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are and what do you do if you're in an area that has a rodent issue? How do you deal with it and set up accordingly? Do you do anything permanent? Do you have a permanent solution or a permanent preventive? Let us know. We also have this motion sensor light. This is obviously just a temporary measure while we're here. Um, goes off at night if anything decides to scurry around inside there. We also have a few of those rodent repellers under the motorhome. They're dotted around surrounding the motorhome, um, I think at four points. Again, they kind of flash randomly and we change the batteries out every so often. It does beep to let you know when the battery's getting low. So we do know when that happens and it's just not sitting inactive. If you're in an area that has a rodent infestation um, or issue it's always a good idea to park away from the bushes allow approximately 10 feet at least um, because that's kind of where they like to hide out and build their nests um, and of course the further away you are from their homes the better it is because they don't like to be exposed they don't like to stay exposed too much as they scurry along looking for food. Um, there are a few holes around here in the bushes, um, but we have a Tony, our little ratter. He will go and sniff out any hole in his normal <laughs> everyday investigations. And if there is anything active or if he smells anything, he will start digging. So. He's not indicated at all where we are, so that's, uh, that's a good sign.